Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa has its third energy minister for 2017 after President Jacob Zuma's latest cabinet reshuffle. Terence Kremer joins me now to discuss the appointment of David Mkhlobo. Welcome, Terence. Hi, sir. Terence, what do you think the reason is behind the latest cabinet reshuffle and the appointment of David Mkhlobo? Well, I think that uh, the reason has got little to do with governance and little to do with the country's interests and probably has mostly uh, the most uh, uh, biggest imperative here was about the succession race within the ANC, which we know is coming to a head. And that will have to peel away over the next few months as to how this influences that uh, race. But in terms of governance, having three uh, ministers of energy in, in less than a few, well, a few months, I mean, uh, the last minister, Kubai, was only appointed to that late night uh, cabinet reshuffle at the end of March and was only really finding her feet uh, in that department. Uh, does suggest that maybe something else is at play, as I say, about the succession race, especially, but in, in the energy space, probably the pace at which that department was progressing on getting the nuclear build program back on track seems to be um, what a lot of analysts are saying this uh, movement is about. Th this minister, David Klobo, is very close to the president and uh, has also been close, it seems, to the Russians over the last uh, few years. And, you know, the front runners in this uh, nuclear build are still seen as Ross Atom. Now, that's denied, you know, broadly by all the people that are looking at participating in the program. It wasn't just Ross Atom, but the French and the, uh, potentially the Americans, potentially the Koreans, um, uh, potentially the Japanese. You know, th there's a, the, uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, people interested in this bid. And I don't think they would bid if they felt it was a, a, a closed race. But the perception, the overwhelming perception, is this is about a nuclear and this is about the re relationship with Ross or Tom and with the Russian government and some commitment that has been made um, untransparently to progress this uh, nuclear build program. So do you think the new minister will accelerate the nuclear build program? Well, I think that probably is his mandate. Um, but if you look at the pushback against the nuclear build program, um, it's going to be quite difficult to achieve uh, an accelerated agenda here uh, unless things are done in a way that don't meet South Africa's <laughs> Public Finance Management Act requirements of uh, open, transparent, competitive processes. And uh, we've already seen with... Um, the last attempt at rushing this through, uh, that it went to court, uh, quite courageously taken to court. I personally didn't think it had much chance, and it ended up with the courts saying that the process was uh, was you know was not adequate for what we need um, in terms of South Africa's uh, requirements for public procurement, and that means that a lot of uh, um, instruments and uh, a lot of mechanisms still have to be put in place to make it a process that is pristine and uh, that is compliant. For one, uh, the intergovernmental agreement which allows South Africa to engage on nuclear, and that wasn't just with Russia, that was um, with a number of countries, the US, Canada, Japan, Korea, France. You know, th there's a lot of countries that we have to now renegotiate or rework um, the intergovernmental agreement and to take it to parliament. So that process is going to take some months to achieve. One, you have to go to every country and sign it. Uh, everyone has to be happy with what, what's in that documentation. And, uh, and uh, then take it back to Parliament to have that process uh, vetted, basically, by, uh, by the parliamentarians. So accelerating that doesn't seem, seem that easy or possible. I suppose you can get the ball rolling, but it's not, it's not totally within government's hands as the executive to accelerate that process. There's also the legislative branch. And then ultimately, if it doesn't go through that process, the judicial branch of government will be brought in again to say, is this co compliant? So they have to tick all the boxes in terms of that agreement. And I think that will take some time. The other thing that the court found is that nurses' concurrence um, uh, with, with the determination, minister's determination. So the way we procure uh, electricity capacity in this country is that we have a big integrated resource plan uh, which gives us the framework. Uh, we then take that uh, and we put it into bite-sized procurement chunks. 
either Eskom is build, build certain elements like we see with Madupi and Cusidia, or it goes out to a competitive tender process for IPPs and in this case uh, with the na massive nuclear build program we'll have Eskom as the owner and operator so they would be intimately involved if it, if it proceeds to that level. But you need to have a determination that what we found, what the court found was that the determination process was also not uh, up to scratch. So NERSA, if they receive a request from uh, Minister McClobo for a determination <coughs> to get the procurement process going, I imagine NERSA will want to do it uh, correctly and will probably have to have some sort of public hearings given the importance of the nuclear build. So that again is outside, outside, it's a regulatory competence, it's something outside of the executive's hands. So again, that will take some time. So I think the intent is very much there <coughs> to accelerate the program. But I think if you're going to do this in a proper uh, way that cannot be attacked at in, the, in the courts, it's going to take a very, very long time. What do you think this means for the electricity supply industry and for ESCOM? Well, I think it's, uh, it's problematic that we again have our eye off the ball. You know, we've got a, a utility um, and an electricity supply industry that's in crisis. Uh, Eskom, we know the credibility and uh, sustainability crisis that they're facing. And that's going to come very much to the fore. Well, it's come to the fore already in Parliament with these public hearings into state capture or inquiry into state capture. But it's going to the sustainability crisis at Eskom is going to come to the fore very much during the, the hearings into their application for an early 20% tariff hike from next year. Um, and uh, we're going to see the frailties of Eskom um, in terms of its finances. Now, if you are going to lump Eskom with another mega project, now they've already got two that they're currently digesting and digesting pretty badly, and that's the, the Madupi and Kosile project, which have still got some way to go. We've got a few units uh, running at Madupi now, and we've got one at Kosile, but there's still additional capacity to, to be added. Um, you know, if you lump an additional one on a, an already stretched and already, uh, well, in some, in some instances there's been corruption as well around these processes, but an already stretched uh, utility, you know, you can break it. And I think that we are at a point where Eskom can, is in serious jeopardy of being broken. And I think that ha adding a nuclear procurement program to Eskom in its current state is not good for uh, the sustainability of that utility and for it's a huge risk for South Africa as a country because um, you know basically Eskom doesn't have the balance sheet for a massive nuclear build program so where is how is this going to be funded I doubt that even the Russians are prepared to fund it fully or and um, you know with our ownership and operation but uh, it's just also not within their I suppose financial uh, ability or anyone else, the French or other, anyone else, you know, to, to fund this. It's going to be quite a, a difficult thing. And then actually what we should be focusing our energy and electricity attention on, one on Eskom sustainability and getting it out of its current crisis, but the second is really looking at the integrated resource plan and finalizing a, a credible plan. The current plan, 2010 plan, is totally uncredible. Uh, and unworkable because it, uh, it has demand projections in there that are totally out of whack. Uh, we, so we need to have an updated plan. We know that that process was started by the uh, Tina Jamet Pedersen uh, before she was uh, taken out of cabinet. And uh, we know that there were commitments by Minister Kubai to have that integrated resource plan finalized by February next year. And I think that plan to be credible has to look at how we're going to have the lowest cost electricity in South Africa in future because everyone uh, that is a consumer of electricity is facing hardship in some ways around the price of electricity. The, the price has really surged over the last decade, quadrupled. And we've got a point, uh, at a point where to s keep Eskom sustainable in its current form, they're talking about sort of 20% type level um, hikes. So, and that is not going to be something that industry in particular can absorb, um, given the other pressures on them, other cost pressures, but that for electricity intensive industries is not going to be something they can stomach. So we have a sustainability crisis in, its, uh, in the electricity industry that is having a knock-on effect 
onto businesses ability to, to sustain themselves so this is very serious we need an integrated resource plan that focuses on the lowest cost mix and whether nuclear is an ingredient to a lowest cost mix is highly debatable in the current context i think that what we have seen uh, is that the performance of the renewables first new renewables project while very small has been uh, very good we've seen a massive fall in the price cost uh, prices and tariffs uh, associated with solar projects in particular, but also uh, onshore wind. We know that we've got uh, unparalleled, unmatched solar resources in this country. We also have a very good wind resource. You know, if you combine that too with the fact that we have a good land uh, resource, which is the, the third part of that golden triangle of, uh, of having a renewables mix, of having one, the solar resource, two, the wind resource, and three, the land, We've got all three of those components, and that, and given what's happened to the prices for these technologies, that is likely to be uh, in any sort of objective model of South Africa's economy, uh, South Africa's electricity mix going forward. That is going to be the resource you should lean on most heavily if you've got decarbonisation commitments, which we know we have, and even coal is going to battle to compete um, more and more with these solar and wind cheap costs. So that's where the eyes should be on, looking at what is the future. We can see that renewables decarbonized wave is coming and is hitting, um, uh, starting to hit our shores. We need to adjust our electricity supply industry to that, to that wave. It's, it's a big, big competitive advantage or comparative advantage that South Africa has the wind, the sun and the land uh, to do that. And then you build your mix around those work, 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 workhorses, potentially. So the, the role focus on nuclear at this stage is not necessarily in the country's national interest. What we should be looking at is focusing on the least cost mix. And our eyes shouldn't be off that ball, because if we don't focus on the least cost mix, the impact on the economy as a whole, and especially uh, our traditional energy intensive industries of mining, and, uh, and those other big uh, electricity industries are going to come under serious pressure. And those are also the, the areas where we get our most of our foreign exchange earnings. So this um, is, is an unfortunate development. It's not about governance. It's not about uh, taking South Africa's electricity system forward. It's really about something else. And I'm sure that's going to come out in, in the months uh, and year, uh, months ahead as to what this is really about, but it's, it's, uh, it's really something where we're putting South Africa last, which is really very, very unfortunate. Thank you, Terence. That's the second section for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.